Good evening, everybody. Welcome inside Burke, Burke's Catholic High School for high school football here on Bob Long Sports, presented by the Small Player Big Play app. Bob Long, along with Brock Gamore, to bring you the action. Scott Smith handling the camera duties tonight. It's the Harrisburg Cougars playing their first game of the year against the Burke's Catholic Saints. And I'll tell you what, Brock, this is going to be a great football game. Two game teams that really have had an interesting road to get here. Harrisburg just learned this week they were going to be able to play football. Burke's Catholic had a game scheduled for this weekend. That was canceled. Two ADs hooking up and saying, let's play. And this is going to be one heck of a football game. Yeah, absolutely, Bob. Burke's Catholic coming last week against Daniel Boone really got the ball going on the with the run game. And then that opened up the play-action pass in the quarterback, Hoffman. He had a very good, solid game against Daniel Boone, and they got a big win there. And now they get to face this big team in Harrisburg. And Harrisburg going to get the season started real quick here. They won the coin toss, elected to receive, and Jalen Johnston back deep to return. Burke's Catholic dressed in the black. Harrisburg in the white. We're underway. This one caught at about the four-yard line. Very patient there. Now busts it forward, and he's got a lot of room. Out to the 50-yard line, one to beat. And chased out of bounds at around the 33-yard line. So a big return there for Harrisburg High School. That's where they'll get started. One more look. Yeah, good blocking by that front line, and it say, the kicker came up and slowed the runner down. That let the other runners come back and push them out of bounds there. That's a big stop for Burks Catholic, keeping Harrisburg off the board early there. That's Justin Cook, number five. He'll line up outside at wide receiver this year. John McNeil, second-year quarterback. He served in a 50-50 platoon for the majority of last year with Nakari Williams. Kind of won the job, Brock, by about week seven or eight. Williams moved on, and now it's fully O'Neill's job. They come out with two running backs in the backfield, a shotgun set. And there's the give. It's Jalen Johnston. Was met at the line, able to eke out a few yards, and stood up right at the 30, second and eight. Big pressure from Burks Catholic up there in the middle of the run stop. Made him bounce it outside, and the backers came and flew to the tackle. Second down and eight. Mark McFadden, number 55, along with number 57, Ty Barreto. Did a really nice job at pushing into the backfield. Interior defensive lineman going to be really important here tonight. Again, Harrisburg. In the shotgun set, here's some motion. Again, the give. Johnson has a lot more room that time. He's got the first down and more. Peeling defenders inside the 20 to the 15. Yeah, and just a quick inside zone right there to the left side, breaking a couple tackles. If you see these linemen, they're going to push and shade to the right side. That gives a good lane up there, and he's a tough runner, Johnson is. The benefit of having some really offensive linemen, you know, we'll see some pulling guards at times here tonight as well on some power looks. And really with the motion, too, it's going to make the linebackers flow a certain way here. Johnston in the backfield. The quarterback, McNeil, surveys the scene. First and ten. Johnston again. A heavy dose of Jalen Johnston. Touchdown, Harrisburg. Same play right there. They're going to get do a quick inside zone here. Johnston gets the ball. And he goes right up the middle to the left side again. Number 74, the big right guard there, gets a good block, and he breaks a couple tackles. He's right in for the end zone. Six early ones for Harrisburg. 10-22 to play first quarter. John McNeil. The do-everything man here for Harrisburg. Quarterback and kicker. That one's no good. Might have gotten a piece of it as well. Nice job off the edge there by number 11, Christian Caccioni. Let's get one more look and see if he did indeed get a piece. 
Great pressure there. Yeah, no one picked him up, really. He got a good jump on the ball, and I believe he did get a piece of that, Bob. So 6 nothing. Great work there by Scott Smith on the camera to pick up that block. And Harrisburg, they're coming out strong. I mean, for their first showing here, the first game, they're running the ball. They're getting the offense going. The tempo is going to start going here. And they've impressed so far. They're getting good blocking in the front. The run game's going to get going, and that's going to open up the pass game for them too. Yeah, we talked to Cal Everett before the game, head coach for Harrisburg, and a guy who has really overseen a tremendous rise in this program. We mentioned two state title appearances in the last five years. 2016 occurred at when they were at the 5A level of PIAA, and then 2018 at the 6A level. Obviously, Micah Parsons and some other great talents. Nate Bruce, another one who's going to depart from Harrisburg and, and go up to Penn State to play football next year. But Cal said, you know, I really don't know what you're going to see from our team. Obviously, a very talented team and a team that fits to make a, a big run through District 3 every year. But they've only been practicing for three weeks. They lost 17 starters from last year. So learning a little bit about themselves early on against a really good Berks Catholic team. We're going to see this offense now, Brock. The number one rated offense in Berks County thus far early on. Yeah, and this offense, the wing T, it really gets the linebackers confused with the counters and the quick hitters up the middle. The wing T, though, really helps with the play-action pass. After the Berks Catholic gets the run game going, it's going to open up the pass game. McNeil will kick this one deep. Returning for Berks Catholic. Coming up to get it is Christian Caccioni. Caccioni out past the 25, and the ball comes loose. It's a scramble for it. Harrisburg thinks they have it. And it looks like they do. Still no signal. There you have it. Harrisburg football, and we're going to wait just a little bit longer to see Brad Hoffman in the Berks County offense, and now incumbent upon this defense to get a stop early on. And that's a big momentum for Harrisburg. They just moved down the field with the strict run game, get the score, and now they get a turnover on the ensuing kickoff. If Berks Catholic has to get a stop here, shift the momentum back to their side, get their offense on the field, and show what they're made of too. I think it's going to start from that interior, the front seven here for this Berks Catholic team. Certainly John McNeil can throw the football, but I think until Berks Catholic shows they can stop the run of Jalen Johnston, I think it'll be a heavy dose. Out in the 4-3, McNeil steps up. And he thought about throwing it. That's a good decision there. He's going to be taken down for a loss, but he was past that line of scrimmage. Now a late flag comes in from the umpire there. But we'll take one more look. Right there he's past the line. Now he's thinking about throwing it. Yeah, and Aiden Gallon, number 44, really had good pursuit, wrapped him low, and then number nine, Justin Small finished him off there. But there was a flag, hasn't been picked up yet, and there's some discussion amongst the officiating crew. See tonight's lead official coming out towards the 42-yard line, and it's unsportsmanlike conduct called against Burks Catholic, a 15-yard penalty. And that just hurts Berks Catholic. Their, their goal right now is to stop the run game. And a penalty like that, it's just moving the ball without Harrisburg even doing too much of it down the field. And here they go again. The give is right up the middle. Big time stop there. That's number 55, Mark McFadden in there on the stop. That's a great tackle right there. Really got to him before he even hit the line of scrimmage. I think he gets a yard there. That's a big run stop, though, for Berks Catholic. Now they got to stop him on second down here. That was Kiev. Greg, number seven, running the football. We saw Jalen Johnson on the first drive. It's Greg now coming in there, a senior at five foot seven. Harrisburg's now going to make a change at the line. they got to look with the hard count. Now look to the sideline. See what they come up with on second and nine. Throwing over the middle. Wide open. That's a touchdown. Damaris Waters. And that's just simply a defensive secondary breakdown for Burks Catholic, Rock. Yes. The linebacker here 
It's going to, there's twins on both sides. That's going to confuse the linebacker here. He's going to drop, loses, the corner loses him, and it's a straight post pattern right to the middle of the end zone there. That's a good play design by Harrisburg, though, and I like how their offense is going right here. They're seeing what the defense gives them. They're going to look at the sideline, see if they can make any changes. Well, and give credit as well to number 11, Jameer Henderson, who came out wide. He pulled the linebacker, like you said, on this side of the field. Obviously, there was the tucked linebacker in the center of the field, but the cornerback stayed on the outside. The linebacker was drawn to Henderson, and then wide open miscommunication on the defense led to the easy touchdown. Yeah. What do we got going on here, Bob? Yeah, we got a, a whistle here and a stoppage. That's Justin Cook running towards the sideline. I think it's as simple as a, a personnel issue. And Trying to figure out whether they're kicking the field goal or going for the two-point conversion. One thing I think we know is that John McNeil is going to be on the field. He's the kicker as well as the quarterback. But what's the rest of that 10-man ten ten personnel going to look like? Yeah, absolutely. McNeil is going to be on the field all the time here, and he's more of the heart of this Harrisburg team right now. <laughs> that official says, calm the sideline. Down. I think that was three rows in front of us. I don't think that was from the sideline. Yeah. And they are going to line up for two here. Yeah. Same formation. They're going to go with the shotgun. Two running backs in the backfield this time. And it's Kiev Greg up the middle. And he's in there for two. Yep. And Harrisburg going to line up with that split back, each one on the side of McNeil. And it, it's kind of it's a, it's a hard formation to stop because you're going to have twins on the left side. And you don't know what back is going to get the ball, both of them have showed that they can run Johnson, especially on the first drive. And Greg now, he's going to start getting his carries in the game too. 14-0, 9-11 to play, less than three minutes gone. But for Burks Catholic, it's important to get that offense on the field. Brad Hoffman, we talked a lot about it in the jump here, that uh, this is a strong offensive team, number one rated offense in Burks Catholic through three weeks of the football season. And excited to see what Hoffman can bring to the table and – Tell you, the coaches here on Burks Catholic just want to see him get out there on the field. A, a tough spot to come back from at this point, but you have to be comforted by the fact that your offense has not yet gotten the chance to, to move the football, and let's see what they can do against this Harrisburg defense. Yeah, and I mean, it is hard if your offense hasn't stepped foot on the field yet in five minutes, but if they can get a solid drive here, move the football, that's going to shift the momentum again. they got to get the momentum back on their sideline and believe in themselves, and it's going to be a good game. Christian Caccioni, the lone deep returner. He's got his heels on the nine. Burks Catholic in the black, Harrisburg in the white kicking off, and it'll be another short kick. Caccioni up to the 25. Caccioni has a lot of room, makes one miss, and he's out to the 44. Great starting field position. For Burks Catholic. And that's exactly what Burks Catholic needed. A big return like that sparks some momentum. Look at Caccioni right up through the middle. Great blocking by that interior line again for Burks Catholic. And it's it's a save tackle by Harrisburg there. He misses and it's a touchdown and we got a 14-7 ball game. Brad Hoffman, the junior, comes out. A wing T offensive look. And that's what we'll see from Burks Catholic. Cal Everett said... It's tough to prepare for that in three days. Let's see what they can do. Misdirection handoff, and that's a good bust up the middle. Could have been a loss of about one or two, but Caccioni finds a way to salvage some yardage. It'll be second and six. And that's what I was saying, Bob, before the game. It's the wing tee. It's going to confuse the backers. You look, at he opens right, but it's going to be handoff behind him, coming back left, and it's just a little counter play, and it's going to work. It worked last week for Burks Catholic. Let's see if they can keep it going this week. 8.36 and ticking here in the first. This time he goes under center, faking the give. Taken down, tries to throw it away. I think they're going to call that down and credit the sack. Indeed they will. Run the clock, and it's a loss of four yards. And Mackay Hopkins got in there. The sophomore had good pressure on him, and he 
He broke the edge real quick. He set the edge. Hoffman couldn't get around him, and it was good pursuit by him, and it, it's a big stop for Harrisburg here. So what can Burke's Catholic do on a big third down? Third down and 11. Eight minutes to play here in the first quarter. It's 14-0 Harrisburg. This the first offensive possession for the Saints of Burke's Catholic. And that one just a bit high and wide, intended for number 80. Just a little bit high and wide there. And I was looking for Trace Brown, I mean, number 20, make that. He's a guy that we were looking forward to seeing there, and I think he's going to get involved a lot more over the course of this game, Brock. I do too. You know, Harrisburg's a good – if you're looking at the D-line here, they're a good stop. You've seen the pressure on the pass game. But that run game, if they can get that going, I'm going to look for Trace Brown down the field, big comeback routes, post routes, where Hoffman can see him, throw the ball to him, and let him finish the work. Alex Zavala will punt it deep. That one's going to land, and it does take a Burks Catholic hop inside the 25-yard line to the 24. Kyle Williams, the deep man for Harrisburg. Oh, we got a flag in the middle of the field as well. Yep. He was adroitly telling his guys to get away from it, avoid trouble, but perhaps they did not avoid trouble after all. This one right by the S logo in the center of the field. So now here comes the Berth, Berks Catholic defense again, taking the field. We'll see what the ref says here. A very long discussion between this lead official and one of the side judges. Now the official's heading over to talk to Cal Everett, presumably to ask what he'd like to do, whether he'd want to push back Burke's Catholic and have them repunt it, or if he wants to take any yardage and just tack it on to where that ball was down. So this is going to be a penalty against Burke's Catholic. Yeah, and the punt team is going to come back on for Burke's Catholic. I think it's because you have a guy back there so solid and so talented in Kyle Williams. And also, Burke's Catholic got the... Yeah, it's a face mask yep. against Burke's Catholic. So it's actually going to be penalties against both. Yep. Face mask against Burke's Catholic, as you saw, holding against Harrisburg, and they're going to repunt. I don't know why he had to go over there and talk to Cal Everett. My thought would have been, hey, make a decision, Coach. Do you want them to repunt or not? But the offsetting penalties brings up fourth and eleven. And we got another flag here, Bob. Movement. That will go against Burke's Catholic. I'll say again, interesting to see that call come from the umpire. A lot of times, false starts you'll see come from the Officials on the sideline, the umpire is the one looking directly at the play clock if there were to be a delay of game. But the official saw that movement. Fourth and 16, and Zavala, that one comes off the side of the foot and bounces out of bounds at the 42. So more good field position here for Harrisburg High School with 7.33 to play in the first quarter. Yep, and let's see if they can establish that run game again. We saw in the last touchdown, it was a blown coverage a little bit, but the quarterback, McNeil, went through his reads, found the open guy on a nice little post route. Burke's Catholic has to get a stop here. they got to get the momentum shifted back. If they keep letting Harrisburg get these big plays, these spark plays, they could be in for a long night tonight. High School Football is live here on Bob Long Sports. Coming your way westward from... The city of brotherly love, thanks to Bruce Badgley at Small Player Big Play in allowing us to come out here and call the game. We're excited to be here. That give is right up the middle, and great blocking there. It's Kiev Greg again, right up the middle. Give him 11 and a first down. Yeah, and that formation you're going to have, it looks like Johnson to the left, 
of McNeil and Greg right behind him. It's a quick give right up the middle. They're going to let the D end come up the field. The tackles will go get the linebackers. It's just a quick hitter. Here we go. It's been a lot of key of Greg here in the last two drives. Jalen Johnston joins him in the backfield. And that looks like Colby Newton is walking out to the sidelines for Berks Catholic with what appears to be a shoulder injury. That would be a tough one there. He serves as the fullback and obviously on the defense as well for this Berks Catholic team. First and ten. Inside Saints territory here for Harrisburg. A whistle. This should go against Harrisburg. In the area of a false start. Yep, and it came from the line judge, too. Or encroachment, simply lining up. Yep. On the other side of the line of scrimmage. First down and 15 coming up for Harrisburg. Can't say you see that one every day. No, you cannot. And they're going to go with the same formation here. We got another stoppage. Gives Harrisburg an opportunity to substitute. In comes Marquise McMillan, the senior, replacing Kyle Williams. And now McMillan's going to head off the field. And in comes number 15, Damaris Waters. First and 15, 6.57 to play. Give up the middle. And now they flip it to the outside. Key F. Greg, good looking play there from Harrisburg. Big time hit, but not until a 20 yard gain by Kiev Gregg. Great yeah. fake there. Yeah, it was a great fake. Very good soul sell by Johnston. Quarterback McNeil pitches it to Gregg. He hits the outside and a big stop by Caccioni right there to save probably a touchdown run again. Lay in the wood, but Harrisburg will take it. Driving again inside Burke's Catholic territory. 6.38 to play. Clock ticking here in the first quarter. Jalen Johnson on the toss sweep. Finds the seam. Turns the legs. First down for Jalen Johnston. Give him 11 yards again. And it's just, it's just a simple toss play to Johnson here. He gets a good block by Greg out there. The right tackle gets a good seal, too, and he's a hard runner. We've noticed it already throughout the game. He's broken a couple tackles. He's going to run. He's going to run till the whistle blows, and we see that again on just a little toss. He gets 10 yards. Keep an eye on Damaris Waters. He has one of the two touchdowns. It was a receiving touchdown, breakdown defensively for Burks Catholic between the linebacker and the cornerback. Allowed that cross. Again, they're going to go without a safety here, Burks Catholic. Keep an eye on Waters, left-hand side. Instead, they'll go near side. That's caught. Turning with it and making some moves inside the 10-yard line. Number four, Kyle Williams. The super sophomore does it again here for Harrisburg. Yep, just a three-step drop from McNeil. Gets perfect timing on the pass. Gets Williams there, and he makes a good break. Gets the first down. That's a good sequence of plays right there for Harrisburg. And we got to keep an eye out on Waters out here. Single high man coverage across the board for Berks Catholic. No safeties. Goal to go from the nine. First down. The give is right up the middle. Kiev, Greg, he's in there. Touchdown, Harrisburg High School. And they lead 20-0 just a little bit more than six minutes into the game. Yep, and it's just their bread and butter right here. He's going to get the snap. He's got a lead blocker in Johnson. Greg gets the ball, 
Goes right up two missed tackles from Burks Catholic, and he dives in the end zone. Well, look at number 64 in there as well. I mean, that's an unbelievably good play. Nate Bruce going to Penn State next year. Well, he almost took the defensive lineman with him all the way up to State College as yeah. he pushed him into the end zone. The 6'5 senior, I mean, he, he's being a lead blocker today in this run game, has proven that this offensive line is big and they are strong. John McNeil. That one's off the upright. No good. But another good, <clears throat> sustainable drive for Harrisburg. They're up 20 to nothing now. Let's get this. Let's see if this Burks Catholic offense can get their momentum going on their way. We're going to term this the single doink here, by the way. Yeah, it's just off the right <laughs> upright there. <laughs> So now, what can Burks Catholic do on offense here? Can they get the run game? Can they open up the pass game? What are they going to answer with after? Well, I don't think you change. I don't think you change your approach at this point. Yes, if you're down 21 points, if you're getting that, you know, a time thing, you still have all the time in the world. Um, but what you have to do is is count on that offensive line staying in their gaps, creating some space. Certainly, it's going to be tough against a team as physical as Harrisburg. But some misdirection, but I think it really starts with, as you say, figuratively in many phases of life, blocking and tackling. It starts with blocking and tackling, I think, here tonight. And you're exactly right, Bob. Like The, the offensive line has to make a statement here. They're going to have to move these defensive linemen in, out of their gaps, let the running backs have their own area, and let's see if they can get the run game going here. That, that is a big part of the wing T formation. If they can get the run game going, it's going to open up other plays in their playbook. Caccioni got Burks Catholic all the way out to the 44 on the last return. Perhaps he can be a spark plug here. This one, very short. He's going to come up and get it at the 16. Caccioni tripped up at the 31-yard line. Good coverage there that time by Harrisburg. Caccioni brought down by number three, Anthony Day. One more look. Anthony Day there in on the tackle for yep. Harrisburg. Yep, and Burks Catholic got some solid blocks there, but Harrisburg... They're coming to the football. They're, there's a bunch of them around there. They're going to they're gonna tackle you. And Caccioni got the rough end of the stick there. It was a hard hit below the legs. But now here comes this Burks, Burks Catholic offense, and what are they going to answer with? Brad Hoffman leads the offense out there. 5.20 to play first quarter. That's a give to the fullback, and he's taken down. And there's going to be a penalty coming in. Unnecessary roughness, I think, will be the call against Harrisburg. And after the stuff that you're going to see here against Colby Newton, you're going to see a discard by the defensive lineman. Face mask the call, 15 yards, first down. Yeah, and that was a good run stop there by the Cougars, but you got to stay away from penalties. Penalties will hurt you in this game, and now you just gave Burks Catholic a first down. And... Let's see if they can use that for a little momentum here. It's a big boy in there grabbing your face backs. Tayshawn Kelly, six foot, 350 pounds, the nose guard in this defensive line. Interior defensive end. The give, and taken down just shy of the 50-yard line. Good run there by number nine, Justin Small. Yep, and it just starts with the motion, a little jet sweep here. Hoffman's going to turn to the left and hand it right off to Small. He gets the outside edge for a couple of yards there. Well, and that's one of the difficult things in guarding the wing tee is you have that split end there, Brock, and a guy that certainly can be a, a, an issue in the pass game, uh, obviously opportunity to run block, but really that motion, like you said, creates some commotion, some chaos, and creates a second and manageable, second and six. Run a similar play. Cascione spinning his way just about a yard short of a would-be first down. One more look. Yep, and Hoffman gets the ball. It's, you see these two pulling guards by Burks Catholic. They're going to be the lead blockers. Creates a hole for Caccioni, and they get a solid run out of it. They're managing the run game right now. they got to pick up this first down here to keep the drive going. It, what do we got, third and one here? Third down and one. Luke Hughes, very talented and very athletic left guard. He was pulling and got all the way to the next level. 
That's a give, doesn't get there. Maybe a half yard gain, but clog in the middle, number 74, Roy Irvin for Harrisburg. Yeah, Roy Irving and Tayshawn Kelly, both big six foot, over six foot guys. Kelly at 350, Irving at 295, run stoppers in the middle. They got pursuit and stopped that quick hitter from Berks Catholic. You ask how the offense changes, and I know I said don't change anything, but I think this is absolutely the right decision. Going for it here on fourth down, 317 to play first quarter. Cascione dives for it. He's got it by a half yard. And they're going back to that play, Bob. They're going back to the pulling guards here with Caccione. They're going to put the ball in his hands. You see the setup here. Obviously stronger on that right side. And there's that split end we talked about, the wide receiver getting in on the run block as well. Yep. Number nine, Justin Small. He gets the ball a lot, but also that was a key block in allowing Caccione to get to the line to gain. Now Small comes in motion. The give is right up the middle, Colby Newton. Downhill for two yards. And exactly what you said, Bob, that the split back there over to the right or the left, they have one on each side. You distract the defense with him. You can use him in the pass game, like you said. He's a big run blocker. But on that play, they distracted him with the fake jet. It's just a quick hitter to new and right up the middle. We haven't really seen Harrisburg leave their base defensive package much. They haven't done much in terms of adjusting from the linebacking core on the motion, but can still provide issues. There's Small. He's going to get close to the first down. Give him a gain of seven. Third down and one upcoming. Yep, and it's just another give from Hoffman off the left side. I like what Berks Catholic is doing here. If you're noticing, a lot of the runs are going to the outside. They're not going to hit the quick dives because when you look at the other defense line for Harrisburg, you have a guy that's 350 pounds and a guy at 295. It's going to be a hard run up the middle. Ball's on the far hash. The give is Cascione. Has the first down. Needed one, got two, and I am impressed by this kid. Seemingly no seam at times, but finds a way to claw his way through. That's a great inside cut. Yep, and they're going right back to the bread and butter there. Number 66, Luke Hughes, the left guard, leads the blocking, pulling from the left side to the right. Give it to Caccione. Get the tough yards there. Get the first down. Keep the drive going. The linebacker, Makai Hopkins, for Harrisburg High School, looked to have Caccione wrapped up, and it was that inside cut and downhill running that was the difference. Now, again, it's on the jet sweep. Caccione, good block there by the by Justin Small on the outside, and a good gain there. Yep, and just like you said, Bob, look at Justin Small. A good seal block there as a split back. Let's Caccione cut inside of him and gets the yards again. Now we got a second and... Second and about six here. Yeah. I mean, that's a solid run on first down, though. You get four yards, now you're going to let your run game keep going, and then you're going to find a way to open up that pass game. They'd sign up for that every time. And you know what? This is exactly what the doctor ordered. Sure, it's a, it's a big deficit at this point, but an opportunity to get your offense onto the field, give your defense some rest, and wear down this Harrisburg team a little bit. It's exactly what you needed. Another three-yard gain that time for Christian Caccione. And they're going right back to that play, Bob. They're pulling the guard, Luke Hughes, again. And the other left guard there. They're pulling number 50, it actually is, and Ryan Wethley. They're both pulling, letting Caccione run right behind him. Final seconds here of the first quarter. And that'll be the last play of it. So after one, Harrisburg 20, Burks Catholic 0, and it was... An all-out assault to start this game. Uh, 14 points on the board for Harrisburg before Burks Catholic even got the football offensively. A fumble on the first kick return for Burks Catholic put them in a hole, and Harrisburg has been able to move downhill. Great blocking up front. Best exemplified, I think, by Nate Bruce. Running his defender into the end zone as Jalen Johnson, Kiev Gregg have been able to follow his lead. And that's been the difference so far, but 
Berks Catholic well on their way. And a nice offensive drive here that will lead us into the second. You are watching high school football here on Bob Long Sports. Thanks for being with us. Presented tonight by our good friend Bruce Badgley and the Small Player Big Play app. Safe social media, an opportunity to put lots of content on, on a really, really great app. We're excited to be good friends with Bruce and soon to be very, uh, very tight colleagues as we're going to put our Nittany Lions Sports Report show, a Penn State football show on the air weekly once the Big Ten football season gets started near the end of October. So excited to be connected with Bruce and with the Small Player Big Play app. And again, Bob Long here from Bob Long Sports. So excited to be alongside making our way out here to Reading for a big time football game. Third down and three. Flag in the area of motion. For a heavy running team like this, Brock, that hurts. That's, uh, you know, you've been three yards in a cloud of dust and moving it down the field, taking time off the clock, giving your defense the rest. But now, just one little five-yard penalty like that makes it third and eight and a little bit outside their comfort zone here offensively. I yeah, think. and going from a third and three to a third and eight changes the whole dynamic of the play calling now. You have, you've been on the runs with Caccioni. Now what are you going to look forward to to get this big third down? Four down territory. The give. Good blocking there on the outside, but Harrisburg wraps up after a gain of about two. Number two, Connor Gunnarsson. Connor Gunnarsson, the receiver, got his first carry of the night. Yeah, and, you know, this was a good play design because Gunnarsson came from the opposite side, made a good cut, but the defensive line and the linebackers of Harrisburg flowed to the football trapped him from cutting backwards, and they made the good tackle. Fourth down and five, 11 26. Opening moments here of the second quarter. 20 to nothing. Harrisburg leads over Burks Catholic. Might need to put the ball in the air here on fourth and five. And it is. Play action fake. Taken off with it. And he lost the football. Either way, it's going to be short of the line to gain. A turnover on downs. Harrisburg comes up with it. And I see what Hoffman sees here. There's not much open. He takes off with the football, but he did leave it a little open there, and it was a great, great pursuit by the Harrisburg again. And he wasn't going to make the first down, but I saw what he was seeing there. And it, it's a good effort there. Now, Burke's Catholic's defense comes back out of the field. They got a big rest with that long drive now. Let's see what they can do here, Bob. I actually think without a fumble, I think he would have made the first down. I think the ball was just poked and then bounced a little bit back. And so whoever fell on it was going to be short. Okay. But without the fumble, I think he would have gotten it. Samir Wilkerson for Harrisburg got the strip. John McNeil at quarterback, hands it off. No, he kept it himself. And Burks Catholic right there for the stop. Big play. And it was just a little read option by McNeil here. They had trips to the left. He puts it right in the running back. Summit doesn't like what he sees. The DN crashes. He's going to keep here, but it's a great tackle by Connor Gun Gunderson. Again, coming up, pursuing the quarterback and holding him to a yard gain. First time we've seen John McNeil all day hold it and keep the ball on the read option. Now Harrisburg will look to their sidelines, getting some singles from the coaches, see what play they go with now. That was a gain of two. Second down and eight, 10-21 in teching here in the second. McNeil looks downfield. He's got a man wide open over the top and comes down with it. Big time catch that time. Number eight, Markai Strawbridge. And what does Harrisburg do? They line up trips on the opposite side now. They don't do the read option. They let McNeil roll out, and he has a couple flat routes coming right in front of his face, but he has Strawbridge right down the middle. And Strawbridge had a couple steps on his guy, and what a great throw by McNeil on the run. And good work by Scott Smith, I tell you. 
moving that camera like a pro, which we know he is, of course, but that's a big turn there and got the, uh, the catch cleans. Thank you, Scott. First down and 10 from the 30. Williams, the motion man. This is Jalen Johnston. That's a major league stiff arm and a hoist. Nice job defensively coming up with the stop. Number two, Gunderson. Yep, gets a little motion. See what the defense is in. A real quick read to Johnson there and another great play by Gunderson. Holds up. Johnson from hitting the edge and makes a big stop there for Burks Catholic. His buddy Trace Brown is going to be thanking him for making that play after that initial stiff arm. Really big time play by Jalen Johnston. But great pursuit, right? You stay within your gaps. You string things out. Yep. And it's just a gain of two. Same play, but to the opposite side. Jalen Johnston. Taken down inside the 25-yard line. Gain of about five. It'll be third and three. Yep, and Johnson again, just another quick hitter, quick hitter right for McNeil here. Victor Vieira gets the tackle here. And a nice spin move by Johnson right there. Really avoiding the tackler. It's now a big third down. Ken Burks Catholic make a statement here and hold Harrisburg. Harrisburg has scored a touchdown on each of their possessions. Two fumbles early on for Burke's Catholic. Cook in motion. And again, Jalen Johnson first down and a lot more. He dives into about the 13-yard line. Give him a gain of 11 and a first down. And it's that left side of that line, that Harrisburg line, like you said before, Nate Bruce, the big man, leading the pack there. And also number 54, Terrell Young, another guy. Untouched to the end zone, Jalen Johnston. Nicked up right at the goal line, but that was more than enough. Touchdown Harrisburg, that's his second of the night. Harrisburg with a quick play right here, right to Johnson, lets the DN come up gets a Nate Bruce gets to the linebackers a great block by him again and Johnson rolls right into the end zone for another touchdown for Harrisburg so that's 26 nothing 0 for 2 Harrisburg has been on their extra point attempt so I would anticipate the offense remains on the field and indeed they do Kiev Greg will join John McNeil in the backfield The give right up the middle, Kiev Greg into the end zone for the two-point conversion. Two for two on the two-point conversions. The only thing that has not been successful tonight for Harrisburg has been those extra points in the place kicking. Yeah, and you know what? What did we see again right there, Bob? They're going right up the middle. They're letting these big offensive linemen, these strong guys, push the pile, and they're, the running backs are following them right into the end zone. This is a very good performance so far by Harrisburg coming in their first game here after only a couple weeks of practice. I'm very impressed by them right now. Time to play a game that we're bringing over from Philadelphia, and it's called Where You At? Let us know where you're watching this game from. Follow us on Twitter, at Bob Long Sports. That's at Bob Long Sports, and tweet at us. Let us know where you're watching the game from, and then anything else you'd like to throw in there. We'll give you a shout-out on the air. This is for both the Harrisburg and of course, the Burke's Catholic side as well. Give us a shout. Let us know where you're at. And thank you very much for watching. So now Burke's Catholic is going to get the ball back here with about 7.54 left in the second quarter. Down 28-0. They need to get their offense going again like that one drive they had. They moved it down the field. They let their defense get a rest. If they can get a score here, they're going to shift. They're going to shift some of that momentum, get the defense, another stop for them. And we're going to have ourselves another good football game right here. But Berks Catholic's got to start it right now on offense.
John McNeil will kick it deep. Christian Caccioni receiving toes at the 13. This is a short one. Caccioni nowhere to go that time. Out to the 30-yard line. Marquise McMillan in there on the stop. He's been good in a few instances defensively here today. Yeah, and this is the first return. We really haven't seen Caccioni break a big one to the 40. McMillan, really good pursuit. Way to get down, break down, and make the tackle. Seven minutes, 50 seconds to play, second quarter. And it looks like at least early on that 14-point hole that Harrisburg created before Burke's Catholic got the football, making a difference early on. Stuffed up at the line. Two big interior defensive linemen for Harrisburg, creating trouble for the wing T. Yeah, and this is a good play design here by Burke's Catholic. It's a fake dive. It's a fake coming around a new one. It's a fake dive, but when you have Kelly and Irving in the middle with Bruce, those big guys, the run stoppers for Harrisburg, it's going to be hard to run the quick hitters, Bob. We got an early where you at. We got David Berman, our man Dave from Philadelphia. He is watching from Ambler, Pennsylvania. So thanks, Dave. He's actually off the call game himself. Let us know, like we said, where you at. We'll give you a shout. And that's a give to the outside. Cook taken down. And a late whistle there. Some extracurriculars. McFadden for Burks Catholic. And it looked like Kelly in there for Harrisburg. Watch behind the play here. Yeah, and it's just a kind of toss there on McFadden gets tossed there. And you can't just you can't do those things if you're Harrisburg. You made a good stop on the outside on the run game, and you're just giving them a first down now. I think there was some frustration on Kelly's side. The McFadden block may have gone on a bit longer and farther away from the play than Kelly would have liked, but officials see the second one, and you have to have some more restraint there. Yeah, and you know, they Especially when you have 70 pounds on yeah. them. Yeah, and they always say block to the whistle, and when you're blocking a guy like that, you really have to. Yep. Absolutely. Newton up the middle. And the fullback dives forward across the timeline and a gain of about five. The timeline. You think I'm ready for basketball season yet? <laughs> Burks Catholic, they're getting the run game going again here. They're taking time, though, and that's good. They're letting their defense get a rest. They got to sustain these drives, though. Second down and five, 6.53 and ticking here in the second. 28-0, Harrisburg does lead. Hoffman with a give to Caccioni. Caccioni again finds his way forward. Helmet pops off, so he'll take a, have to take a snap off. No, no, it wasn't Caccioni after all. It was number 23, Losing the helmet for Harrisburg, which is Lemire Johnson, the lone returning starter from last year for this team. You would have thought that was Nate Bruce, but Cal Everett said he actually, in just an effort to, to lessen those reps and because they had such a strong defense, he played a ton on defense, but came off the bench. So Johnson, the lone returning starter. And that's good for Everett. To have a guy like that coming off the bench, that's just that helps your team even more. Third and one, more than enough for a first down. A gain of four yards there, and you really see the offensive line on that particular play creating some distance and moving the pile downfield. Yeah, and you know, I think that's that's key for Berg's Catholic. If they can move these tackles, let Newen pursue and get the first down there, they got to be able to create running lanes, though. If they can create running lanes, move these big D linemen from Harrisburg, they're going to have success with it. Caccioni in motion. He'll take it on the jet sweep. Good block there by Cook. And Caccioni again. Give him six. 
Really like this seal on the outside from the split end here. Yeah, Caccione just in motion, and you're right, Bob. Look at that block there. He pushes him outside, lets Caccione run underneath him. That's a key, key block by Justin Small to let Caccione run on the left side of him and get yards and not let the DN stretch the play out. Justin Small, number nine, now lines up. Looks like in the backfield. And it is going to be Justin Small. Taken off one tackler, but is taken down after a gain of one. Third down and four. Yeah, and Justin Small gets the ball here, but Harrisburg's number 23, Lamere Johnson, came flying from the left side of the field and laid a good hit on Small. He bounced off it, but with that hit by Johnson, lets the other, his other teammates come and pursue him too. And again, looks like Newton and, Sm and Small in the backfield. Faking the give. Some room to that side. Pitches it forward, and it's Colby Newton for a first down. He keeps on turning inside the 25. And that's what, Bob, this is what the run game's going to do. But I really want to give credit to the offensive line there. They all had good seal blocks. Let Hoffman roll right. Finds new one for a big first down for Burks Catholic. Takes a little bit of advantage of the overcommit, I think, as well from Harrisburg. They've pretty much run every time they've run uh, the the wing T. They've kind of taken wherever, whichever way that uh, that tailback is coming from the backfield. They kind of move that way when he comes in motion. That time, run that motion that way and then waggle the other way. Yep. That's a really nice job. Flag comes down on the play. Colby Newton taken down after a gain of about two yards. We'll await the call. Colby Newton brought down by number 23, Lamere Johnson. Flag on the play. You're walking this one back. This one will go against Burks Catholic. Yeah, and you know, that's... That's a hard one to take right there. Berks Catholic's going to be first and 15 now, but they're still in their range here. If they can get a couple big plays, they're going to be in field goal range, get some points on the board if they can do it. Clock starts ticking on the official's whistle. We'll, we're under 340 to play here, second quarter. And that's a good looking play. Caccione, he's going to lay into the end zone. Touchdown, Burks Catholic. And Bob, this play is genius. Look at they get the motion. They get a fake to Newton, too. And Caccione comes around the right side, gets it. There is no one. Harrisburg flew to the motion man, like you said earlier. And Caccione's got to run into the end zone. It's there. the same concept of what we were talking about on that play action. Run the guys one way, over committing on the Harrisburg side, and then simply run some reverse action. That was brilliant, like you said, and that's a really big touchdown for this Burks Catholic team. It's 3.21 to play. First half, they get a stop here. You never know. Chance to get something perhaps again before the end of the half. And see if we can have ourselves a ball game here. Yeah, absolutely. Looking good. See what this flag is. And it's offside against the defense. This will take it about uh, a yard closer. Interesting to see. Do you change your decision making at all? Yeah, what do you do here? I mean, it is a yard closer. What is the coach going to do here? As of right now, he's going to keep his extra point team on the field. Alex Zavala, the place kicker. So they did decline the penalty. Yeah. 
28-7 as Zavala tacks on the extra point. 3.21 to go, second quarter. So now Berks Catholic, if they can get a quick stop here and get the ball back, they have timeouts left, can move down the field and hopefully get in field goal range for Zavala. He's got a big leg. I saw him last week here. The kid really can kick the ball, and we'll see it on this ensuing kickoff right here too. You're watching high school football here on Bob Long Sports, presented by the Small Player Big Play app. We come to you by way of Philadelphia, normally calling Philadelphia Catholic League football and basketball, and excited to be calling this one here today. Now the kickoff for Berks Catholic here. Harrisburg sending three men back to the 10 yard line. Zavala kicks that one deep. Up to the 25, big gap up the middle. Zavala's gonna make a play and does just barely. Slow down Justin Cook. He's out to the 48 yard line. And that's where the offense led by John McNeil will get it started again. And Harrisburg opened the middle of the field very well there for a return, but the backup quarterback, the senior Ryan Madrick came up with backside pursuit and made a very, very good tackle. Motion man here, first and 10. Fired across the middle, caught. Gain of 15 yards and a first down, Marquise McMillan, and we keep saying that name. He has been everywhere today. Yep, and twins to the right here. McNeil gets a step, three-step drop, and it's just a little quick. You get the flat route, and then McMillan's going to run a slant, and McNeil puts it right on his numbers. A very, very good pass by McNeil there. It's tough for Brooks Catholic. you got to keep seven in the box because of how well Harrisburg has been running the football, but that's going to leave a lot of one-on-one -on -one matchups out there, and against a guy like McMillan, it's a tall task. Give is right up the middle, and pretty good. St oh, no, Kiev Greg somehow kept his feet, somehow kept the knee off the ground. Touchdown, Harrisburg. And what a run by Kiev Greg. He stopped. He's wrapped up around the ankle right here. Stays on his feet. Doesn't go down. And a, what a run by Kiev Greg. And a really nice job by the officials there not to stop that play either. It was close, but the replay, at least as far as we can tell, showed, a, showed that was clean. That's a touchdown. Yep. And like what you said, though, they're going to let the pass game do their thing, and then they're going to go right back to the run game, Bob. Two thirty-seven to play. Second quarter. And Harrisburg with 34 points on the board. They're 0 for 2 from the extra point spot. John McNeil will try it again. Not before we get a whistle. <laughs> we keep getting these whistles on these extra points, Bob. I don't know what's going on here. Game one here. I'm not sure I understand what the issue is. I'm not sure either. They're subbing players out. Justin Cook, it, it looked like the official was telling him to get off the field. They replaced him with somebody. It wasn't a 12-man issue. But McNeil is good on the extra point. Extra point is good. And now Harrisburg up 34-7. to 
Berg's Catholic here. We're going to have just about 2.37 left. They have three timeouts. Can they move down the field with this time and their three timeouts, get a score here before the half hits? They are going to get the ball after halftime, too. That's right. Yes, they will. Certainly a lot of time in this half to get another score, but Harrisburg, there is no doubt about it. Imposing their will, it starts with the offensive line, and that has really driven the day. It's forced Burks Catholic to put seven, eight in the box. Even then, stopping the run has been an issue. And then when there's a time to change it up, Harrisburg has been willing to do so, throw to the outside, and that's when you get the one-on-one -on -one coverage. It's made it tough. Exactly what you said earlier, Bob. They're going to force Burks Catholic to put that many men in the box to stop the run game that they proved works on the first opening drive. And after they put those seven in the box, that's going to allow the Harrisburg receivers to get man coverage on the outside one-on-one, -on -one, and they got speed. They got speed, and they got good route running, and that's going to let, let – McNeil moved the ball around to his receivers and allowed them to get open. More folks checking in on where you at. Salise Dillard watching our Cougars from Harrisburg, they say. Well, thanks for watching, Salise. We appreciate it and, uh, and hope you enjoy the rest of this one. Appreciate you being a, a fan of both these squads and of Bob Long Sports here tonight. Again, check in where you at. Let us know where you're watching from. McNeil will kick it deep, and again, Christian Cascione is back there deep to receive. That one a liner. That'll be caught at the 20-yard line. It's not Cascione. Heading to the outside, nudged out of bounds at the 30. Number seven, Ryan Madrick. Yeah, and that was a short kick, and Madrick's going to come up limping here after the sideline, the backup quarterback, the senior. And now Burks Catholic's offense will take the field, trying to put some points on the board before the half. Yeah, Magic really slow to get to the sideline, as you can see. Hoffman comes under center. 2.31 to play, second quarter. There's the give to Small. Small nearly made one miss. But a nice play in there defensively by Kiev Gregg. Yeah, Justin Small with a good uh, run to the left side, but Kiev Gregg a nice wrap and tackle, keeping Small from only getting about two yards on a first down play here. Both teams have the full complement of timeouts. You wonder with a stop here, by Harrisburg if they think about leveraging one of those. Caccioni, it's again the reverse. Gets close to the line to gain and stumbles across it. And that's that same play they ran on the touchdown there, Bob. Exactly going back to the point you made earlier. Look at the linebackers in the ends. Foul the motion. Like you said, they're going to wrap Caccioni around the backside and let him run. Gets two good blocks. A special good seal by number 54 for Burke's Catholic. Yeah, Jackson Huddleston. Up the middle. They actually said that was third and one. That's going to be enough for a first down. Sure looked like if the 40-yard line was our target, I, I thought he, uh, I thought Caccioni had gotten across it, but nonetheless, Burke's Catholic moves the chains on that one, a gain of two. And they're just a little over a minute here, 112 left. Burks Catholic's got to think about going a little up tempo here, getting the ball down the field. Oh no, ball's on the ground, and fortunate that Brad Hoffman is able to fall on it. That one may slow the progression here. Now they may just be happy to head to half as we tick under 50 seconds to play. We'll get one more look, just right on the snap here. Kind of lost yep. the football. Yep. Just a little, 
was I don't know where exactly he was going with that one, but it, the ball just slipped out and an unfortunate mistake there for Burks Catholic. Loss of seven on the play, 33 seconds left in the half. The give is right up the middle. Justin Small gained about four. And Harrisburg elects not to take the timeout. That may be the last play of the half as we're at 16 and ticking. Down to five, they'll come to the line. And a timeout is called by Burks Catholic with 1.4 seconds left in the half. So perhaps take a shot deep. I don't know exactly what's going on here, Bob, unless they have a trick play in the back of their playbook, and they're going to elect to use it now. I mean, we're talking about they're at the 38-yard line on their side of the field. What are they thinking here with a minute or a second left? Well, you'd rather them call the timeout with 1.4 left than with 17, because then you, you could come up short and have to kick it deep. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, hey, listen, uh, y y you like the, uh, the gunslinging mentality here? Take one more shot. You're down 35 to 7. Maybe you catch magic in a bottle here. The one thing you can't do is get too aggressive, throw an interception, fumble the football. Uh, y you can't give Harrisburg anything more here. Exactly. So let's see what they have under their sleeve. They burned the timeout, 1.4 seconds left. This is the final play of the first half. He'll drop straight back and take off up the middle. That's going to come back as he had launched it past the line of scrimmage. But now here we go. Harrisburg, he's got some blocking and is taken down and goes out of bounds at the 43. That could have been trouble. Fortunate there. The flag is going to be for throwing the ball past the line of scrimmage. So that will be the last play of the half. It's 35-7, Harrisburg. Yeah, and they, they took a shot. They took a shot, but with that shot comes a big risk too, and it almost backfired on Burks Catholic there as Harrisburg got a big return. But we'll see what the coaches bring out of halftime here for each team. Harrisburg, obviously, stick to the game plan of running the football, letting the passing game. Burks Catholic, they're going to have to get the run stopping up, and the offense has got to get some momentum going here. You are watching high school football, and it's live here on Bob Long Sports. You can visit us at boblongsports.com, Bob Long Sports on Twitter. Bob Long Sports on Facebook, and you can probably guess what our YouTube channel is as well at that point. Check us out for high school football. We do college stuff. Drexel Hockey airs on our network, uh, as well as Swarthmore College Basketball. So happy to be out here in Reading here today. Great work by Scott Smith on camera. Great work by Brock Gamore. My color commentary and uh, my pal up here in the booth tonight, I appreciate him doing a great job on short notice here. So thank you to all. And again, this game is brought to you by Bruce Badgley and the good folks at the Small Player Big Play app. We'll take a break. Come back in just a few minutes, 15 minutes on the clock here for halftime. Both teams retire to their respective end zones to talk things over, and we'll be back in just a few. Good evening, everybody. Welcome into the Nittany Lions Sports Report. Good evening, everybody. Welcome into the Nittany Lions Sports Report live on Bob Long Sports. Today we're going to talk about the offensive line and our man of the hour, the chef, the man himself. This year you're going to see all four guys run. They all bring a different style. The quarterback is going to read the defensive end's eyes and make a determination. Am I going to keep this football or am I going to hand it off to the running back? And that is generally the point of the RPO. Look who we have. We have Chris Perangeli, our guest picker for the evening. What does your character look like? Does it bounce back after each setback? 
Does it stand out by standing up? Does it make good on good intentions? Character is invisible until it's not. Only through action will the world know what it's made of, what you're made of. Find out how you can strengthen the character of your community alongside empowered veterans and families of the fallen at travismanion.org. People ask me why I'm giving up a year of my life to help kids. I say, who says I'm giving up anything? If kids who drop out are eight times more likely to end up in prison, do we open more prisons or mines? Queen makes an appearance here tonight at the Berks Catholic High School football complex. We will rock you by the band here. Looking dapper in their Halloween costumes. I guess it's that time of year. I don't know. 2020 is one of those years you could tell me it's April and I'd believe you, but I like the Halloween costumes here and uh, great job by the band. About 12 minutes, 40 seconds left before we get to the next one. We'll bring you some high school action and one of the best games in the state from last week. LaSalle College High School, yes, the, the school that we primarily broadcast for, took on Delaware Valley a team that uh, made it all the way to the round of 16 in last year's state championship uh, tournament out of the 6A, and they were taken down in that game by State College. But this was a great early season matchup, two teams that have never played each other, LaSalle against Del Val. Here's some content, some football to keep you going during half. Stay with us. We'll be back in about eight minutes. Jason Henderson, the fullback. Machado, the deep back. Again, it's Machado. And it's a fake into the back of the end zone on the throw. Touchdown, late call there from the official. Splits on this side, just one. They're gonna count on the safety to get there. Daly fires over the middle. That's caught across the 50 yard line. It's Matt Bowes with a first down for LaSalle. Well, this is Ryan Moore on the Wildcat down to the one yard line. Melman, the deep back, plunges forward, touchdown LaSalle. Sends it deep, a high spinning kick. Caught at the five, that's Kalanick. To the 15, busts it outside, nowhere to go. Ball's loose, Dominic Morton. He got it loose, looking for a call. One more look at Martin getting the football, and it is going to be Delaware Valley football Third down and five across the middle. It was deflected at the line. One more look. And we mentioned Timothy Barrett. There he is, getting his hands on it and forcing the punt. Now faking a jet sweep instead right up the middle. Great play call and execution by the Explorers. Dive it right up the middle. It's a great play call. This time it will be the jet sweep. Martin out there blocking. And a nice run across the 40-yard line to the 41. That's Justin Machida. Delaware Valley is going to have to make a, an adjustment here defensively. LaSalle keeps running this same look, just with different execution. A lot of wrinkles here. This time it's Melman up the middle again. Run this play until Delaware Valley shows they can stop it. 6.53 to play second quarter. Here's McFadden to the outside. McFadden cuts in. He's got a first down and a lot more and runs through two tacklers, wrestled down at the 19. And essentially added a fifth linebacker. So a good adjustment out of the timeout. Now Daly looking back the other way, has a man wide open. Makes one miss, Matt Bowes. Touchdown, LaSalle. Nate Melnick comes out wide, the wide receiver here. In motion is Callanan. Callanan takes it. LaSalle stringing it out well, taken down for a loss a touchdown in plenty of time. They run the screen, big one hand to catch there, Henderson. Henderson has a lot of room. Henderson out past the 50. And taken down inside the 30 yard line. They went inside to the fullback last time. 
Now they fake it to the deep back. He's wide open in the end zone. Touchdown, Delaware Valley. LaSalle bites on it. And Aiden Oliver makes some pay. Aiden Black, the tight end. Underway here in the third. It's Justin Machida again, right up the gut. He's got a lot of room. Makes one miss at the 50. A flag comes in behind the play. Machida takes it to the house. And a second flag comes in along the sideline. It is a hold, and it will come all the way back. Taking the give is Daly. Takes the shot deep. Machida comes down with it. Justin Machida, touchdown LaSalle. LaSalle nearly got there that time, and the flag comes in. They're going to go deep. They take the shot now. Callanan there. Callanan to the end zone. And I like the play call. You get a break, you take a shot on the next play. Now they'll go for two. Chance to tie the football game. They'll go with three backs. Double tight end look. Henderson dives. He's in there. Decking down in 13. 902 to play. All square at 20. Daly. There's a wheel route for Martin. Makes the play. And I got a trick play going here. Looking for Philly Philly. Machida. And it's incomplete to the near side. They fake the give. Looking for the tight end, and they have him. A lot of room out past the 40-yard line. At some point, does Delaware Valley try to take the top off here? That's going to be a give up the middle. A missed tackle, and Henderson running down the field to the 31-yard line. Third down and one. Three running backs, as they do in short yardage situations. Bouncing it to the outside. Stood up by Chris Thompson, and he's short of the first down. Decision time here for Delval. Up to the line quickly. Fourth down. They sneak it. It's going to be close. First down, Delaware Valley. Oliver, he'll take the shot now. Callanan, oh, what a defensive play. Sheer brilliance that time from Amir Anderson. Watches the eyes of Callanan. It's third down and nine. Confusion here on the LaSalle side as they snap it quickly. Faking the give. Henderson, it was just overthrown. 2.19 to play. They are going to send out the field goal unit. This time it's the quarterback, Aiden Oliver, from the center of the field. The kick is up, plenty of leg, and it is good. Tight set. Sorge on the near side at receiver. Daly takes a shot over the middle. What a catch. Inside the 45-yard line. Justin Machida, high point in the football here tonight, goes up high and catches a laser from his quarterback. There's Daly, slides to the side, chucks it deep. Machida, an absolutely unbelievable catch. How about the game for this kid? He is just going up and getting the football. Score, but how much time are you going to have left on the clock? Here's the toss sweep. Jet sweep with some room, cutting inside to the one yard line. Dom Martin, the deep back. Five seconds left on the play clock. Tim Melman busts it forward. Touchdown, LaSalle. 45 seconds on the clock. LaSalle leads by three. Four receivers. Oliver, he'll throw it deep. And Ryan Moore. Brings it down. Ball game. Tracking it down. Brilliant play by the LaSalle safety. Another live look at the Burks Catholic Band here. They've been serenading the crowd with great hits and tunes over the span of the halftime. We have about four minutes to go until we 
bring it back for second half action. It's 35 to seven. Harrisburg leads over Burks Catholic. We talked about it a little bit at the jump. This is actually Harrisburg's first game. So back on August the 20th, the Harrisburg School Board, they had voted to suspend all fall sports. They reversed course on Monday, October the 5th, and with 20, within 24 hours, this game was scheduled. A big, big thank you to both these ADs who got this ready to go here. And, uh, and boy, this has been a fun one. Burks Catholic, certainly some room to make up, but... The wing tee offense, they were ranked number one in Berks County for the first three weeks of the season. And they really played some tight games, uh, specifically the one against Cedar Cliff, 35-34. They lost in double overtime. This is an offense that can still move the ball. And so I wouldn't go anywhere if I were you. We got some fun ahead of us over the span of the next hour plus here from Berks Catholic. The complex on campus, a beautiful high school, and a beautiful night for football. As day becomes night, the lights come on, and it is officially Friday Night Lights. Stay with us. We'll be back in just a few minutes. Great work by this Brooks Catholic band, and they get the well-deserved applause. From the good folks here at Brooks. Good evening, everybody. Welcome into the Nittany Lions Sports Report. Good evening, everybody. Welcome into the Nittany Lions Sports Report live on Bob Long Sports. Today, we're going to talk about the offensive line and our man of the hour, the chef, the man himself. This year, you're going to see all four guys run. They all bring a different style. The quarterback is going to read the defensive end's eyes and make a determination. Am I going to keep this football or am I going to hand it off to the running back? And that is generally the point of the RPO. Look who we have. We have Chris Ferangeli, our guest picker for the evening. What does your character look like? Does it bounce back after each setback? Does it stand out by standing up? Does it make good on good intentions? Character is invisible until it's not. Only through action will the world know what it's made of what you're made of. Find out how you can strengthen the character of your community alongside empowered veterans and families of the fallen at travismanion.org. People ask me why I'm giving up a year of my life to help kids. I say, who says I'm giving up anything? If kids who drop out are eight times more likely to end up in prison? Do we open more prisons or mines? Good evening, everybody. Welcome into the Nittany Lions Sports Report. Good evening, everybody. Welcome into the Nittany Lions Sports Report live on Bob Long Sports. Today, we're going to talk about the offensive line and our man of the hour. The chef, the man himself. This year, you're going to see all four guys run. They all bring a different style. The quarterback is going to read the defensive end's eyes and make a determination. Am I going to keep this football or am I going to hand it off to the running back? And that is generally the point of the RPO. Look who we have. We have Chris Ferangeli, our guest picker for the evening. What does your character look like? Does it bounce back after each setback? Does it stand out by standing up? Does it make good on good intentions? Character is invisible until it's not. Only through action will the world know what it's made of, what you're made of. Find out how you can strengthen the character of your community alongside empowered veterans and families of the fallen at travismanion.org. ask me why I'm giving up a year of my life to help kids. I say, who says I'm giving up anything? If kids who drop out are eight times more likely to end up in prison, do we open more prisons or mines? Scott Smith on camera with the look into the Burks Catholic huddle. Brock Gamar stands to my left. 
color commentator here tonight, and I am Bob Long here for Bob Long Sports. Coverage of high school football. We're excited to be here. Introduced uh, to Berks Catholic and District 3 football by my good friend Bruce Badgley, who's off calling another big game. Governor Mifflin tonight, Nick Singleton. Obviously some big-time talent there. He's looking at Ohio State, Notre Dame, Penn State, among others. Certainly got a guy sitting right here hoping he chooses Penn State, but those are obviously great options. So best of luck to Bruce calling that game and to, to both teams there. That should be a tremendous one. But with that, as well as a, a scheduling adjustment on, uh, on our side, um, what was supposed to be a different broadcast tonight, we're happy to be out here. This is tremendous. And, Brock, great to meet you. Scott, good to see you again, my friend. A great game, and Harrisburg has been very strong tonight, Brock. Yeah, and, you know, it's great to meet you too, Bob. I really appreciate you letting me come talk football with you. And, you know, Harrisburg has been great. For the first game of the year, they got the run game going. The offensive line is really pushing the ball, and we'll see what they go with right here in the second half. Christian Caccioni, he's had some chances returning. He's had some success. Again, he does up past the 30, hit hard there down at the 33-yard line. And that is where Brad Hoffman will lead the offense back onto the field for this Berks Catholic State uh, uh, Saints team. Excuse me. And what we talked about at halftime too, Bob, what is Berks Catholic going to come out with? Are they going to keep the same offensive playbook or are they going to have to open it up? Being down 35-7, not where you expect it to be or want to be, but how can this offense respond in the second half to put some points on the board? Number 12, Will Young comes out wide. The motion man and now right up the middle. Got to hold on to that football and does. Looked like it was about to come loose. Colby Newton up the middle. Yeah, and they come out right here, right back to the motion play. It's a handoff to Colby Newton. And number 14 for Harrisburg, Samir Wilkerson. Good pursuit to the ball. Way to wrap up and make the tackle. Forced fumble for Wilkerson earlier in the game. And that nice tackle brings down second and about four. Small dives for it and does get just a yard past the line to gain. And a little power here run, Bob. You got the split back out, the, gets the hook, then you got the fullback leading and Justin Small follows right between all of them, number seven, Kaiv Gregg makes a tackle. Scott, can you get me the Harrisburg sideline for a second? Am I out of my mind? Have they always had the digital marker there first down? No. Or is that just the second half that I'm seeing? Anyway, here's the give right up the middle. And a pretty good run, gain of about two. Yeah, what am I missing there? Yeah, Bob, I'll be honest with you. As soon as they came out on the field, I looked at that, and I was going to say something to you because I don't remember that seeing that glow over there in the first half. Yeah, Scott concurs. Hey, you got to test out the new merch. I like it. Yeah, it's getting dark out. You got to let the people see the down. Just making sure my attention to detail is where I'd like it. Here they fake the give, and they're going to take the shot deep. They have a man, Caccioni. He goes up and gets it. And that's a great pass by Hoffman, a little underthrown, but Caccioni, way to come back to the football. Number 66 for Burks Catholic again. Luke Hughes gets the hook block, lets Hoffman have his time in the pocket, throws it, and Caccioni, look at him come back to the football over those defenders. That's a great catch, Bob, and a good play right there by Berg's Catholic. Kiev Greg was in the area, but at only five foot seven. Advantage Christian Caccioni. And nice job by the quarterback Brad Hoffman to recognize that. And now off the edge here, taken down. Big time play by Wilkerson. And Samir Wilkerson, another big tackle on the motion here. Look at Hoffman, a quick handoff, but look at Wilkerson. Pursuit, shed the blocker, and makes the tackle. Caccioni sees it as well. He was the one tasked with making the block and realized, ah, you know, Wilkerson, big, strong, athletic, couldn't quite contain him. Second down and 12. Oh 
Trace Brown, the wide receiver, and they'll reverse it. Now heading right up in between the tackles. That's a gain of, let's call it five yards. It'll be third down and seven. And Justin Small here, a little misdirection. Justin Small will get the ball here, goes backside, but Harrisburg get, did a very good job being responsible on the backside. And coming up to make the tackle is Johnson, the sophomore. 8.45, clock ticking here in the third quarter. 35-7, Harrisburg leads. This is the first possession of the second half. There's the give. It's small, spinning out of a tackle. He's going to be about two yards short. Fourth down and two, and I think the offense certainly down four touchdowns needs to stay on the field. In a great burst of speed here, Bob. Justin Small runs right, goes right through the ball, gets it, runs through the tackle, just cannot break that little ankle grab by Kaiv Gregg. In comes Connor Gunderson, replacing Justin Small, who's been doing yeoman's work on this drive. They need just inside the 20-yard line for a first down. They're at the 21 now. Play action. A lot of room on that side. Fires across his body. Big time catch. Inside the five-yard line. That's a gain of 16 yards and a first down for Burks Catholic. And a great pass here by Brad Hoffman. Rolls right. Another great job by the offensive lineman to seal their blocks. Hoffman throws almost across his body to catch the ball. And First reception of the night as well, Brock, for Gabe Navarro. Yeah, and, you know, that was a great route by Navarro. Runs across, gets in vision of Brad Hoffman, and allows Hoffman to get it right on his numbers. And now the give on the jet sweep. Gunderson, maybe got one. Good yeah. gap control that time by Harrisburg. Yep, and Gunderson on another quick jet sweep, but the pursuit by Harrisburg stops him. They make him stretch it out, and that's when, when you stretch the ball out, you're going to let the defense come in pursuit of you, and that's what's going to happen there. But a good play by Berks Catholic. Got to be able to punch it in here, though. Already a better than five minute drive. Second down and goal from the four. Right up the middle, Colby Newton. Met there, nudges forward for a gain of about two yards and he cut the distance in half. It'll be third and goal from yeah, the two. Yeah, they went with a little power here. If you see Gunderson comes over and you got Cacciano and then Newton goes right up the middle, tackled by Eubanks. Will DeYoung checks in. He's the wide out on the near side of your screen. Brad Hoffman under center. Third and goal. Caccioni stretches towards the pylon. Touchdown, Burks Catholic. One more look. And they go to the wide side here. A good seal by number 50 of Burks Catholic, Ryan Wethley. And number 66, Luke Hughes, lets Cacciona go to the wide side, use his speed to the pylon, and Burks Catholic gets the touchdown. He tripped awkwardly in the end zone. Good to see him up. No problem there. Cacciona celebrated by his teammates over there. And it's 35-13. 6.07 to play third quarter. A really nice drive by the home Saints. Zavada up and good. And that kid's a good kicker. Yeah. I told you, I was talking to you earlier, this kid's got a good leg. He impressed me last week. And under, he's getting some rush from these outside edges of uh, Harrisburg, and he's still putting it right on the end, up through the uprights with some good air on it too. No doubt about it. Sometimes in high school you, you have athletes that go kick the ball, and Burke's Catholic is blessed with a real, a real good kicker. Yeah, and you know, it, it, some people really don't realize, like with a kicker like that, that helps so much on the kickoff for field position, too. When you can boot it to the 10-yard line and they're starting inside the 25 every time, that is so big for a defense. 
enjoyed the days. I know I've talked about LaSalle, and, and you saw it at halftime as we were looking for some content to get us through to the second half. Uh, you know, I've, I've called games for LaSalle for, for many years, and that's my alma mater. At times, they've taken kids from the soccer team that otherwise did not play football to come out and kick the football. It's, it's an interesting position to fill at the high school level. There's no doubt about it. It is, and through me playing a couple of years ago, I've seen many kickers up in District 2 that were soccer players, actually, and stayed on the soccer team. Zavala will kick it deep. This one will be returned from about the six-yard line. Patience here by Justin Cook. Cook up to the 30. Taken down at the 33-yard line. And that's where John McNeil and the offense will get their first look of the second half. More than halfway through this third quarter. So a, a little bit less than six-minute drive from Burks Catholic to start the second half. And that is a really nice sign for this team. Looking to find their way. They're down three touchdowns, not over yet, but good to be able to impose their will a little bit on this strong Harrisburg defense. Yeah, and it's a six-minute drive, but what did they end with? They ended with a touchdown. They got points on the board. Now can the defense get a stop here? Motion man is Johnson. This one right up the middle. Jalen Johnston. And hit at the line, able to scoot forward for about three. But appreciative are the Burks Catholic faithful on this side of the field. And Aiden Gallon, what pursuit did he have here? He, he got into the backfield, slowed the runner down, and made a big tackle. And here comes Harrisburg right to the line quick. Going to get another play in here. Second down and seven. The day has certainly become dusk as the lights are shining brightly on a beautiful evening at Burks Catholic High School. Jet sweep, first time for Johnson getting this type of touch. He's got a first down and a lot more. Lays a lick on Gunderson as he strides to the 45-yard line. Yeah, and the jet sweep, the first time we've seen it from Harrisburg here. Trips on the right side. They're going to send him over across to the trip side. He gets a big gain and a first down on it. And this is actually Justin Cook who's going to take this direct snap out of the Wildcat. Now he's going to toss it deep. No, make that McNeil. Excuse me. That was just the normal quarterback. The two looked like the five, and it's incomplete. Trace Brown, good coverage out there on Justin Cook on a little post pattern route there from Cook to the outside but Trace Brown right there to deflect the ball a little bit and it'll send him the second down and 10 for Harrisburg Cook and Makai Strawbridge the receivers on the near side ball on the near hash here's a give right up the middle and he ran off his own guy, Jalen Johnston. Snaps off the back of Cook, taken down. That's going to be short of the line to gain. Third down and three upcoming. Yeah, and he had some room here, Bob, that he could have broke. You got a big pull there by the left guard. And Johnston right off the back of his wide receiver. Ball squarely on the 40-yard line. They need just inside the 37 for a first down. Gives up the middle, and they got him. Gain of maybe a half of a yard. It'll be fourth down and three upcoming. Big time stop and penetration by the front seven. Exactly, Aiden Gallon again flies through the line of scrimmage, wraps low, and allows his teammates to make the tackle. Fourth down and three. 3.45 clock ticking. 20 on the play clock. The Farino Sports Complex getting loud. Nothing our man Scott can do about it. Feel the energy here, folks. Fourth and three. 
McNeil, he'll take the shot. He's got a man over the top. Reels it in inside the two-yard line. Makai Strawbridge. In great ball placement here by McNeil. He puts it right in the basket for Strawbridge. Strawbridge, unfortunately, couldn't just get into the end zone. But a big fourth down play for Harrisburg and puts him inside the five. Big time throw and catch. Jalen Johnston in the backfield, along with the quarterback, McNeil. Johnston off tackle into the end zone. Touchdown, Harrisburg. And that is one way to silence a crowd. And just a little outside run here from Johnston. And Harrisburg answered with the big play before this and then just gets a quick outside run from Johnson into the touchdown and goes up 41-14. to And now Harrisburg, late in the third, has a good commanding lead right now. Good on Coach Cal for making that call. It's a, a really good call. Stacking the line was Burks Catholic. Of course you have to because of how much penetration that – Front five has gotten for Harrisburg. And so you're left with a zero safety look on the Burks Catholic side, and you just count on your guy, Makai Strawbridge, to make one miss and go over one guy and make a play. That's really good and really a tough uh, tough island to be put on one-on-one -on -one if you're the defensive back yeah. for Burks. And that's what happens when you play a zero coverage, a man press. You're going to get one-on-one -on -one matchups, and it just takes a step. The toe kick is good, and it's 42-14 Harrisburg. 3.02 to play, third quarter. Bob Long Sports coverage of high school football is live here from Burke's Catholic High School in Reading, Pennsylvania. Alongside me, my partner, Brock Gamore, as well as camera, Scott Smith. Appreciate everybody being here with us here today. Remember to give us a follow on Twitter, at Bob Long Sports. You can go to BobLongSports.com for all of our content. More importantly, on the Twitter side, let us know where you're watching from. Tweet at us, at Bob Long Sports. We've had a few folks Tune in. I see the numbers. Folks are watching. Let us know where you're watching from, and we'll give you a shout-out here on the air. That's a little taste of Philadelphia for you. Where you at is what we call it. Christian Caccioni back deep to receive for Burks Catholic. 3.02 to play. And John McNeil will kick it deep. Harrisburg in white, Burks Catholic in black. That's a deep kick there. Caught it about the 10. Caccioni hit at the 25, nudges forward for another two. And it'll be first down for Brad Hoffman and Burks Catholic. Yeah, C Caccioni stopped there on the kickoff by Derek Foster. A good tackle there, and we have an injury on the field, unfortunately, for Harrisburg. Yeah, it looks like... Looks like it is Foster who made the tackle. Number 27, he's down on the play. Take a second as they attend to him to let you know that you are watching Bob Long Sports coverage of high school football, and it's presented especially tonight, this particular game, by the Small Player Big Play app. Bruce Badgley and his group of guys are doing a tremendous job bringing safe social media and content across the high school and really beyond high school at this point. They're doing a great job essentially streaming any type of event that you'd want on the app, including our Nittany Lions Sports Report, as you saw some of the commercials at halftime, coming your way this fall on the Small Player Big Play app. We're very excited for that. 
And we'll take a quick break and uh, tell you a little bit more about... Good evening, everybody. Welcome into the Nittany Lions Sports Report. Good evening, everybody. Welcome into the Nittany Lions Sports Report live on Bob Long Sports. Today, we're going to talk about the offensive line and our man of the hour, the chef, the man himself. This year, you're going to see all four guys run. They all bring a different style. The quarterback is going to... Back to action here. 2.55 to play. It's 42 to 14, a run up the middle, and Harrisburg there to stuff it. Yeah, it looks to be Colby Newton, or actually Justin Small for Burks Catholic there. Just a little dive up the middle for about a yard, and Burks Catholic going to have to get the pass game rolling here a little bit. Second down and nine. It's play action. Rolling to the right. Throws across his body. De dangerous deflection there. Could have been intercepted and was looking for Gabe Navarro, his tight end, who has one reception and a touchdown here today. Yeah, and Brad Hoffman rolls right. He, If he sets his feet here, I think he can lower this ball just a little high to Navarro over the middle. And now it looks to be we have an injury on the field for Burks Catholic. Yeah, it is Navarro. Unfortunately, out there again. We're going to let them work on Navarro. Great training staff here at Burks Catholic, and we'll be right back again. We'll, we'll finish that. Nittany Lions. Good evening, everybody. Welcome into the Nittany Lions Sports Report. Good evening, everybody. Welcome into the Nittany Lions Sports Report live on Bob Long Sports. Today we're going to talk about the offensive line and our man of the hour, the chef, the man himself. This year you're going to see all four guys run. They all bring a different style. The quarterback is going to read the defensive end's eyes and make a determination. Am I going to keep this football or am I going to hand it off to the running back? And that is generally the point of the RPO. Look who we have. We have Chris Perangeli, our guest picker for the evening. What does your character look like? Does it bounce back after each setback? Does it stand out by standing up? Does it make good on good intentions? Character is invisible until it's not. Only through action will the world know what it's made of, what you are made of. Find out how you can strengthen the character of your community alongside empowered veterans and families of the fallen at travismanion.org. People ask me why I'm giving up a year of my life to help kids. I say, who says I'm giving up anything? If kids who drop out are eight times more likely to end up in prison, do we open more prisons or mines? Great to see number 35, Gabe Navarro. Walking under his own power, walking off the field here. He was hurt. It'll yeah. be third down and nine coming up. Yeah, that's really good to see him after going down, holding a leg. I'm glad to see he's walking off the field. Now, Burks Catholic, can they convert this third down here? This is big. At this point in the ball game, it's almost a need. Hoffman under center. In motion comes Caccione, and it's a reverse again. Harrisburg up to the task. Taken down there by number eight, Markai Strawbridge. Fourth down. That's a big tackle there by Strawbridge. The play was kind of broken from the beginning there. They had good pursuit there, and Strawbridge finished them off. And Burke's Catholic will go to the punt team. It'll be the Zavala again to kick it deep. Kyle Williams, super sophomore, a guy that we have heard a lot about for this Harrisburg team. Guy who had a great freshman campaign, back at it here as a sophomore. And provides a challenge anytime 
He gets his hands on the football. This is a very good punt. Here's Williams taking it to the outside. That makes one miss. Inside the 30. Inside the 20. One man to beat. Kyle Williams. Touchdown, Harrisburg. And what did you say, Bob? He, he's a very dynamic athlete. Breaks the tackle here. And watch the speed he takes here. He takes a good angle up the sideline here. Gets a big block from number 16, Roderick Rogers, and breaks it back to the middle of the field for a touchdown. Tremendous speed on that sideline to put it in for a punt return. And good work by Scott Smith, getting that one all the way to the end zone. And the close-up as he's heading in, that was special from Kyle Williams. 48-14, Harrisburg leads. First special team score of the night. 116 to go in the third. And more personnel issues on the extra points here tonight than I think I've ever seen. Yeah, the holder, the kicker weren't on the field. And here we go. We got another extra blocker coming out now, too. Got to give Coach Cal some leeway, though. It, it is their first game out, and, man, have they been impressive in their first game of the season. And that is no good. Now, I might be sticking my foot in my mouth because I know this is how they do it in Philadelphia. Had that extra point been good would have been a 35 point differential i think they would have gone running clock at that point yep. at least that's what what's up what they would have done in the catholic league in philadelphia and i, I assume those rules are the same across yep. the board you are right when a 35 le uh, point lead in the second half occurs the clock runs so now as of right now the clock will stay as normal let's take another look at uh where are you at so we have some folks checking in on YouTube. We got Ronnie checking in from Harlem, North, uh, 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 New York City. Thanks so much. Lou Bass checking in from San Antonio, Texas. Got Eber Morris checking in from Lebanon, PA, and Michael Watson watching the game from Texas as well. Thanks, everybody, far and wide for being part of our broadcast here today. Tweet at us at Bob Long Sports, and we'll try to get into the, the YouTube chat as well. And, again, give you a shout. Let us know where you're watching from. And, once again, thanks, everyone, for being part of the action here tonight, joining the Bob Long Sports family. We're so excited to be out here in Reading tonight. Justin Caccione, or I should say Christian Caccione, my mistake. Back deep to receive. It's a driving low kick, Caccione from the 14. Across the 35-yard line, pretty good return that time from the deep man for Burks Catholic and the Saints back out on offense, 108 to play in the third. Yep, and here come the Saints offense again back on the field. Harrisburg's defense, besides a couple big plays by Burks Catholic, has kept this potent offense intact and not really in allowing the run game to get going and consistent. Burks Catholic, I think for them right now, just put a good solid drive together, put another touchdown on the board, and we'll see where it goes from there. There's the give on the reverse. Justin Small gets through two tackles. That's a nice gain on first down, four yards. Yep, another just a run right to the left side here by Small. He gets a pulling guard there and gets, he, he goes to the outside here, breaks a tackle with a spin move, and then two of the Harrisburg guys come in and wrap him down there for Harrisburg. And we got a second and looks like it's about seven yeah they gave him three on that play right from the 40 they need to get to a little bit past the 46 for a first down right up the middle met there at about a yard past the line of scrimmage falling forward for another two Brought down by 
Yeah, just a quick dive right here. And he was met by number 27, Derek Foster. Aiden Gallon got the touch. And down to the final seconds here of the third quarter. We'll switch fields and play one more stanza here from Burke's Catholic in Reading, Pennsylvania. This is high school football here on Bob Long Sports, presented by the small player Big Play app. Stay with Good evening, everybody. Welcome into the Nittany Lions Sports Report. Good evening, everybody. Welcome into the Nittany Lions Sports Report live on Bob Long Sports. Today we're going to talk about the offensive line and our man of the hour, the chef, the man himself. This year, you're going to see all four guys run. They all bring a different style. The quarterback is going to read the defensive end's eyes and make a determination. Am I going to keep this football or am I going to hand it off to the running back? And that is generally the point of the RPO. Look who we have. We have Chris Ferangeli, our guest picker for the evening. What does your character look like? Does it bounce back after each setback? Does it stand out by standing up? Does it make good on good intentions? Character is invisible until it's not. Only through action will the world know what it's made of what you are made of. Beginning of the fourth quarter here on Bob Long Sports. Up the middle, big run. First down and more. And we got a flag coming in late. Looks like it might have been in the area of leading with the crown. Take a look at this. Right at the end, Justin Small is going to lower the head. See what the call is. Now the penalty is going to go against Harrisburg. And he's been eject somebody's been ejected from the football game. Boy, if that's if that's helmet to helmet contact and that's the reason he's been ejected from the game, it sure looked to me like Justin Small did his part as well. Not that he necessarily should have been flagged either. But it looked to me like without de dropping that head, that's just a normal hit. Yeah, I completely agree with you there. That's unfortunate. It's a bang-bang play. You know what's really unfortunate is that it happens in the second half of a uh, of a 34-point football game, and now he's going to have to miss the first half of the next game, which I don't know that that's even scheduled at this point for Harrisburg. They just got the go-ahead next uh, or last last Monday, this, this past Monday. Who knows what this is going to look like for Harrisburg going forward, losing one of their key defensive players. Yeah, I completely agree. They don't know when their next game is. But like you said, too, in the second half of a game at this score, you don't like to see that. It, it was a bang-bang play. As you said earlier, Justin Small did lead with his helmet. It's kind of hard to not lead back, but it's unfortunate. And Yeah, it's one of those points of emphasis there, Brock, certainly, right? Safety and health of the kids is the very most important thing that you can possibly do here. And so you want to litigate that out of the game any way possible. Yes. But it's just tough in a bang-bang play like that. I can certainly see uh, if Harrisburg would have another opinion on something like that. Yeah, and like you said, you want to eliminate that part of the game, but it's hard when you're playing this fast. 11.53 to go. That's the first play of the fourth quarter, and Burke's Catholic has it going on right now. Big run that time, and once again, it's number 44, Aiden Gallon up the middle. Yeah, Aiden Gallon on a little fullback dive right up the middle there for a big gain. And the line judge over there looks to be second and two. Interesting, yep. Yeah, the a little line. short. Burke's Catholic, though, a good-looking drive here, Brock, moving down the field. Yeah, absolutely. They're getting their feet under them. Busting it to the outside. Now cutting it in. Caccione, he has a first down. And his helmet went off there, Bob. Caccione lost his helmet. It's a gain of six and a first down. Yeah, a good hard run here by Caccione. Really, really strong run by him going through the tackles. And and the helmet got thrown off, unfortunately, there at the end. Hopefully everything's okay. 
You got a flag here too, Bob, on the far sideline. And again, at the college level, he'd be coming off the field here for at least one play with the helmet coming off. There's the give up the middle, busting it to the outside is Gallon. Gallon should have enough for the first down. They just needed two, and they got it. Good strong run there, Bob, by Aiden Gallon. Really, they tried to let um, Small come around the back, I believe. Yeah, it was Small to try to distract some of the linebackers. A quick give to Gallon there. He broke the first tackle, couldn't get out of the second one. So it looks like it, they did get a first down on the prior play, so it was first and goal from about the nine. Give them four, it's second and goal from just outside the five-yard line. They're faking it. It's small, coming off the edge, diving for the end zone. Touchdown, Burks Catholic. Bob, that play is one of their big plays. It's a counter. They're going to send everyone, like you said before, look at the motion. The motion comes, but you have two guards pulling backwards, and there it goes, Justin Small into the end zone on a little counter play. Good play there by Burks Catholic to get the touchdown. So there's no doubt in this Burks Catholic offense. We talked a lot about it in the open. This is a team that can score, has been scoring, and was the number one rated offense in Burks County coming into this game. A really nice couple of drives. Zavala up and good with the extra point. It's 48-21. 10-18 to play fourth quarter. And a really strong fight from this Burks Catholic offense, particularly in the second half. Yeah, and they put it together. That drive right there was a very good sustained drive. They use their plays that they know can work. The counters, the sweeps, and the tosses. I'm very impressed right now with both teams. Harrisburg coming their first game of the year and now... Burks Catholic with that drive, they're not giving up. They're putting in a good showing and a good score right there for the Burks Catholic Saints. So I have a question for you. Being a novice to the Burks Catholic scene, I'm hearing what sounds to be the Notre Dame fight song, and they're dancing to it. Is this a, uh, is that uh, the Burks Catholic fight song as well? I actually could not tell you that, Bob, but I. You I hear would, what I'm yeah, hearing? Yeah, I would definitely <laughs> bet on it because a lot of the fans are into it. You got a good cheer routine here. People are clapping. I would almost say it is, Bob. That's a good good notice there by you. Yeah, or maybe I should just stop guessing and put, put my foot in my mouth, but it sure sounds like <laughs> there could be a, a derivation there. Burks Catholic on the board again, 48-21 the score. Zavala. And we got a whistle. We're going to get a offside. Offsides on the kickoff. Yep. You don't see that one every day. And relatively new, that rule, you stop it dead as opposed to letting it play out. Yep. And then uh, obviously giving the option to, to that receiving team. But they'll back them up another five yards. Another opportunity to give some love to our Where You At folks. Smoke from Uptown Harrisburg watching the Cougars. Thanks for joining us, Smoke. We appreciate it. Wayne Jones watching from Enola, Pennsylvania. And Rasul Mason from Fort Gordon, Georgia. And Harrisburg's going to have it inside Saints territory. On the short kick there. 10-10 to play, fourth quarter. The offense will come out onto the field, led by John McNeil, the senior. We talked about him in the open as well here, Brock, a guy that was splitting time last year for really the first two-thirds of the year with Nakari Williams. And by about the seventh and eighth game, it was mostly McNeil's spot. Now it's certainly his job. And he's done a great job of managing the football game making the right decisions on the read option, and then when he does get that zero safety look, being able to find his guys over the top and put the ball in a position where those receivers can be successful. Smart 
Screen pass to the outside. Boy, that, that looked like a forward pass to me. It did look like a forward pass, Bob. A little swing pass there by McNeil. So Let's see. He's going to let this go behind the 45, and that's uh, that's at least a half yard yeah, forward. Yeah, yeah. But they're not going to call it that. Nope, nope. That's what I'm saying. They, it's going to be a five, maybe six-yard loss here. I think wow. a tough call there for Harrisburg. Obviously pretty well in control. but Yeah, but still when you see that like that, you – it sure does look like a forward pass. They're going to go trips here, left, single back. Up the middle, big run. Kiev, Greg. Pulled down from behind. The touchdown saving tackle at the 20. Christian Caccioni right there. Good tackle, good effort tackle. Way to stop the touchdown run, but Kiev, Greg, another quick run right up the middle. And what you were saying earlier about McNeil, yes. He has handled this game with very good composure. When he gets the opportunity with the zero coverage and he sees the mismatch that he likes, he's going to attack it. He's had very good ball placement. He's been reading the defense well. And when he – I haven't – we haven't seen him really take it off a lot. We haven't seen him run the ball a lot. But he's been moving outside of the pocket. He's made some very nice throws, and he's managing the game very well. First down and 10. Three on the play clock. Firing over the middle. That was a dangerous deflection there. He was looking for Cook. Justin yeah. Cook. And it was a he, he had some good good speed on his ball right here. And you know, he was looking for him in kind of a little out route here. Mm -hmm. But I'll tell you what, Bob, look at that right there on that replay. I think he had a slant open there to what it looked like would have been Waters. Waters caught the first touchdown pass of the night by Harrisburg. Now Cook comes in motion. And the give is to Kiev Gregg. He's got a cavalcade of blockers into the end zone. Touchdown, Harrisburg. Let's look at the right side of this offensive yes, line. Yes, excellent. And Kiev Gregg, look at number 55 for Harrisburg. Tayshawn Black with a good pull, but exactly what you said, the right side of the line gets their hook box, moves right, blocks off the side, and Kiev Gregg with his speed breaks to the outside and puts it in for Harrisburg. Another impressive run from him. And again, the rushing attack of Harrisburg has proved tonight that they are for real. The only thing that Harrisburg has not been able to do well is kick the extra point, sometime even... Even, even not getting the personnel on there correctly. Yeah, absolutely. They'll Bob. try it again here. They've missed three. John McNeil on to tack on the extra point. But, man, this team right now is playing good football. Let's see if we can get a look at McNeil here. Yeah, the kick is up, and the kick is good. 55-21. Surprisingly there, as a coach, do you – you don't go for two there to try to put it to a running clock. Yeah, eh, I, I hear you. I don't know. It's a 34 point game. Yeah. I think I think the right move by Coach Cal to just take uh, the extra point. Yeah, I completely agree. It was a right move, but like I was just wondering, like what people, other people would think about right. that if they would have gone for y two. Yeah. Well, two things. One, this is Harrisburg's first game as well. Right, mm -hmm. or, uh, um, not as well. I mean, it's Burke's Catholic, not there first. But you know, something for Harrisburg to think about is: I think you're going to see some reserves come in, guys. There are still positional battles out there because it's their first game, and they've lost 17 starters. Call me crazy, but keeping this uh, away from a running clock gives you a few more snaps to to give new guys looks and, and give them game run, yeah. which is such a premium this year. Yeah, and allow them to show what they can be made of. Allow them to prove that they have the talent to play on this team. And I, I I really like that if that's where they're going with this, letting the reserves come in and show what they're made of too. Christian Caccioni back deep to receive. Albert Holton watching from Harrisburg and Mark Keeley from the Lehigh Valley. Thanks for checking in. On where you at? From the 10, Christian Caccioni. 
to the 20 and out of the 25, stutters, and he's going to be run out of bounds. He was run out there by Demarius Wader Waters. And Christian Caccione, he's had a very solid game. I watched him last week take off in the run game, but he's been a very powerful runner today. Had a couple big returns early. Uh, this Burks Catholic team, they played a tough team tonight. They really did. And I think they've proved what their offense is still pulling. I think they can put a drive here together, get another touchdown, and see what, see what they still got here. Oh, this is a really good Harrisburg team. In fact, there might be some folks across the state in uh, the 6A level that are none too happy to see Harrisburg return to play here. This is a team that, without a doubt, they have some uh, depth and they have some veteran leadership in, in some key places, right? It's not across the board, but Nate Bruce headlining that offensive line. John McNeil running the quarterback for the second straight year and some of the talent they have on the outside as well as in the backfield. Listen, it's super early, and there are a lot of great teams across the state at the 6A level, but this team is a team that folks need to watch as this year goes forward. Excited to see what this Harrisburg team does, who they schedule, and see if we're talking about them come late November, early December. Incomplete pass. Yeah, just a little high there. Looking for Gabe Navarro. Yeah, for Navarro, just a little high. But if we watch that route a couple times happen, he's going to roll right. Navarro's going to crumb across his face. He's been open there. That pass just a little high. But going off of what you said about Harrisburg, too, is this team has a big defensive line. It has a good, big offensive line. They move. The, they open up run lanes. They have speed on the outside, and they have an established leader as John McNeil. And I think this team, no doubt, it's week one for them. Week one right now. But if they can get their feet underneath them, they are going to be a team to be reckoned with. Motion, man. And they'll run that same reverse, this time to the near side of the field, cutting forward and diving for about the 35-yard line. It'll be fourth down and three. 741 and ticking here in the fourth quarter. And they went back to that little reverse play to get everybody flowing one way, come back the other way, but a good tackle by Derek Foster staying home on the backside. You know, I haven't called a true wing T offense in a long time, Rock, but it's been fun. I, I tell you, I mean, I certainly uh, Harrisburg's offense has, has made kind of the long, sustained drive for, for Burke's Catholic uh, certainly tough to come back. But, man, when you're a front runner and you run an offense like this, it's got to be – absolutely difficult to get back into a game and they've been very successful over the course of the year that short arm throw a little bit short of number 35 Gabe Navarro a turnover on downs that was fourth down flag on the play. but flag on the play so perhaps new life but I would guess based upon where the flag came in it's going to be in the area of holding yep and it is going to be declined Harrisburg will take over on downs yeah, and like you said, the wing tee, is a, it's a very, very hard defense to gamble, uh, game plan for. Offense, I mean, the game plan for. There's a lot of misdirection. There's a lot of quick hitters. And if you have good, powerful run blockers and a good fullback with some speed, it is very dangerous. And after the wing, the wing tee will wear you out. I played against the offense in high school. It will wear you out. And once it wears you out, they're going to hit you with some tosses or they're going to hit you with a little reverse play action pass, and we've seen that a couple times here. John McNeil and the rest of the Harrisburg offense looks to the sideline. Five seconds left on the play clock. Now they hustle to the line. Down to two, down to one, and they do just get the snap off. Taking the shot into double coverage, and a great deflection there. Number 19, Isaac Picardo. Yeah, Isaac Picardo with a good tip here. John McNeil lets this ball loose, floats it in there in double coverage, but Isaac Picardo, what a play right there. If he doesn't tip that, that's caught by number four, Kyle Williams. Second and 10, 6.54 to play.
Dustin Cook in motion. And the give is right up the middle. Jalen Johnston hit there at about the 32. Sprawls down for maybe one more yard. Gain of four. Yeah, just a quick inside zone there for Johnson. Good tackle by Berks Catholic. Really limited on this cutback here for Johnson. Keeping them inside the numbers. And a, a big third down here for Harrisburg. If Berks Catholic can get a stop, they can put their offense back on the field and get another score. That particular play was well defended as well by Berks Catholic, they had two guys there forcing, essentially forcing John McNeil to make that decision, right? You're reading that defensive end, and they stayed in their gap and forced him to go up the middle with it. Pretty good stop there. Now Jalen Johnston tripped down about a yard short of a first down. Yeah, Johnston broke a couple good tackles there, but again, Berks Catholic is forcing him to go not where the game – look, he's going to go inside, but then – you got a linebacker coming over here, forces him, Caccione forces him outside, another broken tackle. Fourth down, two yards to go. Five minutes, 44 seconds and ticking. 16 on the play clock, and Harrisburg will now break the huddle. Taking their time. They need to get to the 25-yard the, uh, line for a first down. They sit on the 27. Two on the play clock. And they do just get it off in time. Kiev Greg across the 25 to the 23. Gain of four, first down, Harrisburg. And that's a very good play here for Harrisburg. If you see the right back, it's going to swing out. That's going to pull a linebacker with him. And then it's just going to be a quick dive to Greg right up there. Don't block the DNs. Let the DNs come upfield. Shoot the tackles to the linebackers, and you'll get a good block there. Start on the offense. That'll make it first and fifteen. Ball in the twenty-eight yard line. That's Justin Cook. Yeah, and it's a great pass by McNeil here. Justin Cook with another nice catch in the end zone. It, you know, the pass is low. Justin Cook slides in the end zone and gets the touchdown. A good pass. And, you know, there's not much more you could say. It's a great pass by McNeil. A little bit of class. Way to be classy. Yeah, way to class it up. <laughs> Go for two. Good job, Coach. Peace to Right John McNeil set to tackle the extra point. Extra point is good. McNeil's extra point is good for the Cougars. We really want to thank the whole pass and the AD from our staff for having you here tonight, as well as this great crew that had roots at Agile, a small area big play app, who was able to provide for me. Again, Scott Smith doing a tremendous job here tonight. The camera, appreciate him. Rock and Moore, other commentators tonight, and a student of California University.
again down there too. And it's been a real it's been a real good time. Thank you, Bob. No doubt about it. That's Brock Amore on color commentary, Scott Smith on camera. Short kick, caught there at the 35, and run out of bounds shortly thereafter. And now here comes the Burks Catholic offense with a 424 left to play. It is running clock now. But Ken Burks Catholic put one more solid drive together and the night on a very positive note, putting the ball in the end zone. It'll start with the quarterback, Brad Hoffman. Under four minutes to go on that aforementioned running clock. Up the middle, big bust for nine yards. And again, we're seeing more and more carries for Aiden Gallon, yeah, the fullback. And Aiden Gallon, the fullback, with a straight dive, really powerful run right up the middle for about nine yards. It's going to bring up second and one. And, you know, Burks Catholic, it's just these small plays like we were talking about that they get so many yards out of them. And this offense is so dangerous. Gabe Navarro checks out at the tight end spot. Trace Brown to the near side out wide. Here's the give. Cutting it upfield across the 50. First down for Will DeYoung coming off the edge. Yeah, Will DeYoung with a little sweep play here to the opposite sideline for Burks Catholic. Gets the first down here. And a couple more yards after that. And Burks Catholic, they're just trying to get their feet under him here on this final play, on this final drive. Excuse me. And just put one in the end zone and end the night on a positive note. 239 and ticking here in the fourth. Harrisburg's going to come away with their first win of the season and their first game of the season. And Burks Catholic, uh, a 4A school playing up here tonight. They had their previous game that was supposed to happen tonight uh, that was canceled and so they found a way here and well I mean again no no disrespect of course to the uh, the opponent but Harrisburg tonight at the 6A level a team that's going to compete for the state championship yeah, a little different than uh, Capital Prep Harlem Charter who I think you know certainly would have been a, a, another great team for Brooks Catholic to play but man what a challenge that this team this coaching staff put on for themselves and a non-league game that I think is going to help them. Certainly uh, one that was tough to, to play here tonight, but they found and they played at a very high level against a team that could beat anybody in the state. And I think that's going to help this Berks Catholic team going forward. And I completely agree with you. Props to the coaching staff, the team, the AD Bill Hess for scheduling this game. It's a two-class difference between Harrisburg and Berks Catholic. But like you said, and you stress it again, is this game is going to help them. They showed that they can put, as of right now, 21 points on the board against a 6A school with a very talented football team. And this offense works. We saw it last week against Danu Boone, and we saw it in spurts tonight against a 6A school. This game will help Berks Catholic, and it's just going to make them better. They played a tougher team tonight, but it's, it cannot hurt them. 208 to play. Second down and about four. Gallon has a lot of room inside the 35 yard line, truckled down at the 30. First down, gain of 12. A strong run there by Aiden Gallon. Very, very strong run. It's just dragging some people almost with him here at the end. Stiff arming and the guy in front of him, and a good run by Aiden Gallon there. 100 seconds of football to play here tonight. Thanks again for everyone being with us. Scott Smith on camera. Brock Gamore 
on color commentary. Made his Bob Long Sports debut, which we appreciate. Obviously, many more things to come on your end. Here's Will DeYoung trying to tack on one more score. Dives for the end zone. Touchdown, Burks Catholic. And that's a great run by Will DeYoung, a guy that we haven't seen much of tonight. But what is it again? It's the opposite runs. They're going to flow people to the right side, send DeYoung the opposite side, and he goes in for a big touchdown run, the cap off the night for Burks Catholic. Good play design, great execution by this Burks Catholic team. Another chance for Alex Zavala. Up and good. Got a flag out here, Bob. We'll wait the call. Came in at about the four-yard line. After the play was over, a personal foul against Harrisburg. So that will move Zavala up another 15 yards. He'll be kicking from inside Harrisburg territory. Yeah, it's been a great night tonight. You know, we got to watch some good high school football and getting to meet you, Bob, really getting this experience. It, it's really going to help getting to see Scott again and everybody and just watching a good high school game. And I learned some things tonight, like a uh, rendition or a derivation of the Notre Dame fight song here at Burks yeah. Catholic. That's great. I mean, you can't pick a better one than that, right? No. Nope. Everyone's getting into it. We can see the fans down here below us clapping. The cheerleaders got their dance to it. That's great. That's what high school football is all about. Yeah, I'm glad we can get it back in some form of normalcy and uh, you know, just hoping that these kids have the ability to play football as safely as possible. Yeah. Yeah, and people to be able to come out to the game and have a good time watching it. Again, to do so safely is, is very – it's great. It's important. And, um Feeling good about the fact that, you know, that we're doing this and people are doing the right things around it. Yeah. Zavala, he'll kick it towards the end zone, and that'll be a touchback, automatic touchback here at the high school level. One eighteen to play, and Harrisburg out. 62 points on the board here tonight. The offense has been terrific this evening. Yeah, the offense was clicking tonight. They had a good balance of the run and pass game. The run game really set up the offense. You know, it, it put Burks Catholic in a tough position when you got to stack the box to stop the run because then you are putting your corners on an island. And when you have the speed that Harrisburg has and a quarterback as experienced as McNeil, it, it's a tough spot for a defense. It is. And when they're going to spread you out like the formations they've been running, it's going to be hard. Backup quarterback into the game. And throws a little screen. That's incomplete, but the clock will run. Given the previous 35-plus point deficit. Under 30 seconds to play, and the play clock is at 35. Don't know if they're going to need to snap the football again. Ryan Epps, the quarterback, hands this one off inside. And a first down there. That should do it. Gain of 12, and now a flag comes in late with five seconds left in the game. Let's keep an eye on this one here. If this is an ejection because of leading with the helmet, nope, just a legal block in the back. Yep. So... Uh, that's the way this one should end. They'll wind the clock. We should not get another snap.
I only bring that up because we did see the ejection earlier on. It was a Harrisburg defensive back that was ejected from the game. And it was in the second half. I don't know that he'll be able to play in the next football game that Harrisburg will play. No. Nope. And, and that, that runs it out. That's the game. 62-28 Harrisburg. The victory over Burks Catholic. An offensive showcase on both sides. And really, I, I think, two strong teams in their respective classifications of PIAA football and two teams that you will absolutely see come late November, early December. Yeah, and, you know, Harrisburg playing the first game on a couple weeks of practice really impressed tonight. They had a good balance of their offense. Their defense really showed up. And, again, for Burks Catholic, they played a great football team tonight, a team that's bigger than them, two classes higher than them, and this game is going to help them. They are a good football team. We've seen that last week and the weeks prior to that. They can run the football. They can pass the football. And tonight they put up 28 points against a 6A school. This game is going to help mature this team. It's going to build this team up. And Harrisburg, they've got one week underneath their belt now, and we'll see where they go forward now. And the new world of handshakes here in high school football as they stand 10 yards apart and wave to the opposition. Burks Catholic and Harrisburg throw the helmets up. A little stick tap in the hockey world and uh, they'll go on their way. Great game here tonight. Scott Smith on camera. Thank you so much as always. Brock Gamore, great work here on, on the uh, color commentary side up in the broadcast booth and for all of our crew here at Bob Long Sports and presented by Small Player Big Play app, my name is Bob Long. Saying so long here from Reading, Pennsylvania. One more time, your final. 62-28 Harrisburg over Burks Catholic. Thanks to everybody here at Burks Catholic for making me feel at home. And can't wait for my next opportunity to come on up here to the Forcino Sports Complex. Have a great weekend, everybody. We'll see you soon.